Scanning. Identity authorized. Welcome to the Secret Superhero Club Podcast Network. Welcome to the Animation Station Podcast. Your home for discussions and debates about all things animation. Each week, we'll rank, review, and revel in animated shows from yesterday and today, and from around the world. So grab your acne slingshot, set your mobile suit to autopilot, and put on your mouse ears. The Animation Station Podcast begins now. So yeah, the... Free chips thing kind of blows my mind. Dude, it's your fault for never paying attention. I just, next, I'm, next not a, I'm, I'm not a freeloader that scrounges the cafeteria <laughs> for next, like, next over time food I go every and day. I see, you know, free chips, you want me to IM you? Yeah, just say, okay. hey, dude, there's a bevy of chips in the calf. In the calf. In the calf, brah. Let's say going down to the quad to play hacky sack, We kind of do have a quad now. We do have a quad. So <laughs> it's all snowy now, though. I know, it's crazy. Oh, man. I think it got up to a whopping 19 degrees today. Oh, when I was driving home, it was 11. Yeah. It was frigid. It looked pretty this morning, though. It was very nice. Kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> it was, was kind of cold. <laughs> <laughs> Soft, powdery snow. Yeah, people do not know how to drive. No, no, they don't. No, it was pretty pathetic. Yeah. Well, when it happens once a year... I guess people have short memories. We've already memories. had it. Oh, I guess technically it is a new year. We had it like four, like three weeks ago. We didn't stick to the roads, so really. No. This was the first. And it was, it was definitely wasn't that much. Right. It was what four inches. At least. It was thick. Yeah, I think it drifted higher than that in places. Like Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift. Like, that one. Oh, that was the super lame. Drift, drift. <laughs> Yeah. I have no idea what you're oh, doing. Oh, come on. That's Sorry. Tokyo... Oh. Sorry, man. I never watched that uh, movie. Uh, that was one of the Fast and Furious movies, right? Yes, it's the Fast yeah, and Furious. Yeah, I think the last one I saw was the one right before that, which would have been Two. the third one. No, because isn't Tokyo Drift the fourth one? I thought Tokyo Drift was the third one. I, I watched them out of order. Tokyo Drift was the first one I saw. So, oh, to okay. me, it's the first. <laughs> Nice. And then Vin Diesel comes in. Right. You're like, oh, hey, there he is. Hey, what's up, dude? Because see, if you if you watch Tokyo Drift first, mm -hmm. then when he meets everybody, like when they meet for the first time in the first, you're like, oh, okay, this totally makes sense. He just came from Japan and he's meeting everybody. <laughs> nice. But he does get off at the very end by Jason Statham. Oh, spoiler! Spoilers for the movie that came out what ten years ago. That's hilarious. All right, Gavin, it's your turn to kick it off. So, this is the Animation Station podcast. Dude, more energy. What episode is this? This is 24? 24, right? I think it's 24. We have a full day's worth of podcasts now. So, if you want to binge listen, you can binge listen for an entire day. I think this is 24. This is 24. I'm pretty sure. And we've got a... A couple bonus episodes that aren't technically considered. I know the Killing Joke one mm -hmm. is not an actual episode. And, we and I think a... we have like a Cartoon Cafe that's not an actual episode. Right. Ooh, Kubo, right? Kubo, yeah. Yeah. It's just there. It's just there, hanging out there in so Cartoon you've got, Cafe land. So you've got a day and like an hour. Yeah. Well, you can skip the boring parts too, so you pretty much have a day. Whoa! We don't, don't do we don't have boring parts. No, none of our stuff's boring. Okay, well that's good to know. I I thought maybe we did. Well, we're kicking this off this real is great. A strong start, strong start. So, dude, are you excited about anything in the world of animation this week? Because I am. Uh, yeah. Well, go ahead. You talk about your stuff first, All because. Right. I'm just going to sit back. I'll probably go to the restroom, maybe make an omelet, I'm not gonna talk and then forever. come back. There's not much to talk about yet. Talking. Whatever. Anyway, I'm really pumped about all the new Cars 3 stuff that came out this week. And I'm I'm just I'm kind of exploding inside, Josh. I I can't wait for this movie. I'm anticipating it to a greater degree than any movie I can remember in recent history. 
And I like to think that we have fair and balanced coverage of animation things and we give critical opinions of things, but I'm just going to be over the moon about cars all year, so just buckle up, buddy. Can we just go ahead and say that's your number one of 2017? Yeah, yeah we'll predict it now. For our end of year episode, um, at the end of 2017, I'm predicting Cars 3 will be at the top of my list. Anyway, we got some little tidbits this week. We got three little teaser clips, sort of teaser clips, just kind of like intro clips where they gave a little um, video montage um, kind of to show off the three main characters of the movie, which were Lightning McQueen, of course. Uh, Cruz Ramirez, who we've seen a glimpse of before, who is going to be the trainer for Lightning McQueen in this movie, who's a a sweet-looking yellow sports car, female character. And then we have the villain or rival has been revealed, and his name is Jackson Storm. And he looks amazing. And it's the ranger himself. It is, Army Hammer. And, he, man, his car looks amazing. I love it. And they basically just kind of gave a little, like, you know, 360 view of the car. And they show you some details. And they had some music playing. And it was like, here he is for the first time ever, Jackson Storm. It was real simple. And I think they were each, like, 20 seconds long. But it was enough to make my entire day. And I watched it, like, 14 times. It was amazing. But we also got some details about the plot revealed which more or less just kind of confirm what we already thought it was going to be and it's basically you know lightning mcqueen is now one of the older cars and he's having to contend with the young hotshot cars coming in like he was in the first movie kind of kind of yeah is that the name of that one where he has to come back Mm -hmm. and he fights yeah okay that's right Mm -hmm. or as um diehard fans call it rocky five um so anyway it's it's kind of what we Why thought it was going to be diehard fans care about rocky it's two completely different universes diehard fans because john, john mcclain uh... is like in <laughs> in new york and california he doesn't go to philly i don't think touche josh touche <laughs> you got me uh, but anyway yeah it's just a it's kind of you know him dealing with the young upshots which is harkening back to that first film where he was the young upshot and the older cars had to deal with him. So I'm really excited about it. The only thing I'm nervous about yet... Is his main main squeeze car in this one? Sally? Yeah. I don't know. See, that's what I was about to say. I'm nervous because we haven't had any indication of radiator springs or those characters that we know and love yet. Oh, dude, that's where he's going to go to recuperate. I'm sure they're going to be there, but... I mean, I don't know. I would hate for him to be have to be like away. Like, well, let's keep going with the Rocky thing. Like Rocky Four, where he has to go train in Russia, and he's away from everybody he knows and loves for that whole movie. And I don't want that to be what this well, is. Well, in three, doesn't he go train in uh, Miami? Well, yeah, and but he, he takes Apollo his Creed wife and Polly with him. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, he takes his. He'll probably take. He'll take Sally and Tom Mater with him. He better. He better, man. And then, like, when, when if he this wins movie, the race, he'll be like, Sally, if this movie Sally. is lacking in Mater, I'll still freaking love it, but I won't be as excited. Anyway, that's what got me excited this week about the world of animation, and I started watching Troll Hunters. And I'm about five episodes in, and I'm really digging it so far. About time. You're almost halfway through it a second time nice already. Second. Watch You're it, yes. crazy, dude. That's awesome. Uh, we did get a little bit of stuff out of... What is that? That's a... Uh, I can't remember what studio that is. Do you remember what studio does the uh, Secret of Kells and Song of the Sea? Oh, it's... Uh, cartoon, it's um, cartoon, cartoon Saloon. Saloon. You got cartoon it. Cartoon Saloon? So, Tom, Tom Moore. Tom Moore... On his Tumblr page, leaked a couple new it's so exciting, shots man. from his new film Wolf Walkers. It looks amazing. And it amazing. looks super cool. Yeah, I like how he didn't change the style of the wolves from. Yeah, it looks Secret very Kells. much like Kells. It's kind of a return to that style, and I'm I'm totally pumped because Kells and Song of the Sea 
are two of my absolute favorites. Have you seen Song of the Sea yet? No, I haven't seen Song of the Sea yet. Yeah, I need to get it so that you can watch it. It's definitely an owner for me. But that's exciting, man. And th- we don't know anything else besides those two images, right? Yep. That, well, I mean, there, there's a couple little bits of concept yeah. art, but I mean, nothing nice. Nothing big. Oh, speaking of, Coco, the movie from Pixar, started following me on Twitter today. I was pretty pumped. Is it like the real Coco, or is it like a fan account? No, Coco? it's the actual official it has the Coco blue account. Mark? Yes. Nice. They started following Why? me today. I don't know, because I'm always retweeting Pixar stuff. Was it was it an accident? Like when like you're on Twitter and you accidentally follow somebody? I I mean I wasn't. I've maybe, had that I've had that maybe. happen before. But see what you do is you have to be clever with that. Uh-huh. Whenever someone like famous like follows you mm-hmm. and you're like, oh snap. Never tweet them back saying thanks for the follow because they will take you off. Oh, no. I just followed back. Yeah. That's all I did. Yeah. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Never do that on Twitter <laughs> because they will unfollow you. Right, right. So it's like if they accidentally do it, be like, nothing happened. Sweet. Sweet. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Just, it, it's, they're following me now. That was very cool. Right on, man. So um, are we ready to get into it? Uh, it is a little bit more news. Oh, uh, you do? Dragon okay. Dragon Ball Super premiered on Toonami this weekend. Really? Yeah. And we define this as Dragon Ball later, right? No, you do because you're yeah, a weirdo. I'm, I'm a weirdo. trying to be funny. Oh, Gavin, I'm a funny one. <laughs> people, that is what people say. <laughs> they call you blah, blah, blah. They go blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. I thought it was good. How much? It just the one episode yeah, of just that? A, yeah, just the oh, okay. first episode. It's nice. Not bad at all. A uh, good continuation. And is a direct like follow up to yeah. what preceded it? Well, yeah, it it completely takes out Dragon Ball GT, well, which yeah, of ev- course. everybody says <laughs> they hate. So is that like race cars, like Gran Turismo, like no. Dragon Ball GT? No. Okay, just wondering. It I don't know what it stands for. It, it is basically like the Grand Tour, though. <laughs> so <laughs> they do kind of go out. I don't even know what GT stands for. It probably is Grand Tour. Maybe. Because like, they go on, they have to try and find the Dragon Balls across the universe and crap. And uh, I bet they it is. They go to that Beatles movie, Across the Universe. Nice. See what I did there? Yeah. Yeah. All kinds of cross-references <laughs> on this episode. And uh, tonight, we get to go see AMC. We get to go see Princess Mononoke. Is that... That's tonight. It is. It it's is. Monday, no, okay, God. okay, okay. I'm, I'm confused. We need to talk about that later um, for plans. Um, yeah, cool. Anything else? Uh, no, that's all I got. Sweet, man. That's I good. mean, I'm sure something else popped yeah, up. Yeah, there's I animated really things care. all over the place, but uh, we don't pay attention to everything. But Troll Hunters pretty good you pointed out a really neat little easter egg oh, in yeah. the first episode toothless yeah so and if anybody Dustin out there from, uh, stranger things has what what oh <laughs> if anybody has watched it or is going to watch it look at episode one and there's a little dreamworks easter egg in the uh, about halfway through, is that uh, yeah, it's when uh, Jim Lake Jr. Yeah, uh, puts on his troll armor for the first time. Yeah, and they show uh, like you're looking out of the house, out to the backyard where he's standing, but in the foreground near the camera is his laptop, and on it is streaming um, How to Train Your Dragon, and you see Toothless. Looking at a butterfly. Yeah, it's pretty dope. That's pretty awesome. It's a sweet little Easter egg. I was trying to find Easter eggs in this movie that we're about to talk about, but I only I couldn't yeah. find anything. I I saw the one which isn't an Easter egg, which is this can you know a continuation. Which one um, is that? There's uh like when they're flying through the city. Yeah. The first time, uh, the cop is eating noodles at the noodle stand. Mm-hmm. That was it. Okay. It's like the same cop. Right. Yeah. And I was like, oh, cool, cop. I feel like I've seen something online that showed Easter eggs in this oh, movie. There's, there's bound to be. I'm sure there are. There's such a long history and tradition of those at Disney and Pixar. But I, yeah, I don't. None of them jump out to me right now. Yeah. I mean, that movie is so rich with detail. Um, you know. I, I guess we should just yeah, introduce we're dancing it around and the say, bush. hey, we watched we're, Big Hero 6 with, today. Yeah, Big Hero 6. <laughs> Stole my thunder, man. That's okay. I was about to do this well, we big, just... we watched Disney, but then you, you killed it. You want to go ahead and do that? Nope. I mean, nope, you seem really over. excited nope, about it. Already done. All right, cool. 
Uh, so the there's so much happening in all of the scenes, uh, you know, the textures and the detail and the cityscapes that you see that it, you you could hide Easter eggs in that all day long and, you know, it'd be hard to see. But that's the thing. One of the things that I love most about that movie is just how lush it is. I mean, it's real eye candy to the animation fan and, you know, what they did in creating kind of a new take on a city that we all know. I mean, San Francisco kind of has a very recognizable landscape and style to it. And they made it super Tokyo. Yeah, and they combined it with, you know, a lot of the Japanese influence, which is largely in California already, but they really just smashed those two cities together for this new conceptual city. And I don't really know like what the background of that is supposed to be like it's, it's just san francisco i know it just doesn't make much sense but it, oh, it does makes perfect make sense. sense because that would be the best place to ever live <laughs> it'd be pretty cool and but what they do with it is just so brilliant and it just comes off as kind of a natural acceptable thing the first moment you see it even though when you really think about it you're like wait what this is san francisco and tokyo like what's going on here like did japan take over and are they like ruling well now, you or? see america lost the war <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's kind of what it seems like if they won world war ii like would we be like that a would much be a, more Japanese it's, country. That's it's just strange. a real. This movie's a really deep movie. Yeah, yeah, we're going it's way, basically the man in high way castle. farther. <laughs> like yeah. uh, forty years later. Right. We're yeah. We're probably overthinking it. But anyway, the way that they do it artistically, it just the first time I watched this movie, I just immediately accepted. It. Oh yes, this is San Francisco. This is perfect, and it's because I feel like they made it very warm and inviting and pretty and even in the the dark areas or when it's at night when hero at the beginning is you know in the back alleyways fighting with robots and stuff like that it all just seemed so almost quaint and livable wherever you were in those environments yeah. so it it just becomes very acceptable and uh to me uh, it was a huge relief and a huge breath of fresh air when I saw this movie for the first time because it's the one that followed Frozen. And as you know from our previous episodes, I feel like that is the greatest lacking thing in Frozen is that it's they just whitewashed everything with snow and I was so bored with so much of the backgrounds and the scenery and the detail because I felt like it was lost. It was neat what they were able to do with the snow, but I wanted more of that really cool, lush awesome layout design and scenery and i think this movie kills it and i was so glad to see that and then there's the story and the characters oh. which gee, they're so good man i love this movie what's your take josh i was trying to think of something while you were talking mm -hmm. to be combative mm -hmm. to be like the devil's advocate right i just i wasn't coming up with anything it's tough like, huh wait, no but there's no no i mean you, but like, what about oh, no, no even so background characters are animated well well here's the thing everything well, that happens in the background here, is here's done the well. thing some of the background characters look better than some of the foreground characters like there's uh like tadashi for instance uh -huh. tadashi is a, is pretty bland okay now some of the background characters are way cool. Like, uh, wait, Tadashi's like, not bland. No, no, no. I mean, he just no, no, doesn't no. have like a crazy. No, I'm, ta style. I'm talking. I'm talking about you know his like his look. Mm -hmm. His look is is, is kind of yeah. bland. Like just the way like his face looks. It's, it's kind of like okay, yeah, you're you're Tadashi. Right. Um, like Alan Tudyk's assistant. Oh wait, was it it's Alistair Cray? Cray. Yeah. Alistair Cray. His assistant has more definition in her face. She doesn't say a word. Right. And it's just like, oh yeah, cool. Like she looks more put together, more human mm -hmm. than Tadashi does. Huh. It's really weird. And I really liked. Uh, like speaking of background characters, I really hope in the series they do more on the bot fighting because yeah, that, the hostess, that hostess, the, the she was the I want to, <laughs> I want to show just with her. I think you have a little that crush on her, Josh. Oh, yeah, are you kidding me? <laughs> She's everything an ideal man would want. She's so cute. Uh, yeah, I, one thing that I find interesting about this movie in particular is 
you know, I've, I've mentioned many times that when I watch an animated film, I want a unified aesthetic and I want all of the characters to look like they all belong in that world. Yeah. And I criticize a lot of films where I feel like the characters look too different from one another. And so they don't look like they all Tangled, belong. Tangled suffers from that. I really, I don't think Some so. Of the back, I'm, I'm sorry, not Tangled, Frozen. Oh, Frozen Frozen's one of my that. biggest examples of that. Yeah, the, where I feel like some the of those characters don't belong. The townspeople there, like when they're like in the snow it's and they're so, like, ah, oh, it's like, oh, you look so awful. random. The Duke of Wesselton and Olaf, even. I like. He's, well, uh, he you know, in I, a can, I can movie. say Tangled because there's really no. I mean, everyone is like super buff in that movie. I think that except one is except. Except Perfect. Flynn, like everybody yeah, else is this he, big, huge guy. Even the of all those even like the soldiers, ruffian characters, even the soldiers though, yeah, they're all like these are. big, burly guys. And then there's Finn. You're like, you're the only the king. Well, even the, the king is the big and broad. And you're like, oh, well, then there's Finn. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't <laughs> fit. Well, I I mean, I, he has no. A he should be. He should be in San Francisco because he, he feels like he would belong there. A different body type, but his facial structure and and the costume design like all of that looks like they came from the same universe yeah whereas movies that suffer from that i i just i end up not liking as much and this movie is a strange exception because i feel like the character design in this is so varied but in some way they make it work because they've clearly created this city that's already a melting pot and even though the characters, even in our main cast of characters, they could be from six different movies. They really could. I mean, they look so different in almost every way. Like Honey Lemon to Wasabi is a giant leap. Yeah. And then you go to Fred after that. And you're like, what <laughs> universe are we in? But because of the way they've done it, you know, it's college, which is also another type of melting pot. And. I don't know. It just works for some reason. I love the character design in this movie, and it goes against a lot of the things I've said before on this show. But somewhere in the genius of design that they pulled off in this movie, they make it work. They sew it together in a way that it's a believable quilt with different fabric patches all over it that just works somehow. I love it. That and <laughs> what did I go a little folksy for you? <laughs> that analogy. <laughs> Well, I mean, think about it. If if you look at a quilt, like like it's like a quilt with the many quilt, different fabrics. The quilt that hangs on the back of our couch. Can you picture it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, it's got like eight different types of fabric patterns in it. And if you look at them, if you really look at them, and if you were to have like an outfit with a shirt made of one and pants made of another, you'd be like, no way. This would never go together. But through the use of pattern and repetition and you know, all those quilting folksy tricks that they use, they can make a beautiful kaleidoscope out of those things that would technically clash. And I think that's kind of what's happening here. It's kind of a cheesy metaphor, but I think it works here. I think they've created this kind of quilt of all these different patterns and textures. And they've woven it together into a cohesive warming blanket for you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I'm not going to talk about blankets. <laughs> All right, why don't you give us a little story? Let's. Uh, I was going to talk a little bit about the backgrounds. Oh, you were? Okay. That's where I was cool. going to go. Bring it. There's so much detail in this movie um, that it's it's crazy. Um, when we go to, like, after Tadashi dies mm -hmm. and we have the funeral, mm -hmm. just all the little li the light that reflects off of the rain – when it hits the gravestones and it's yeah. starting to pool on the gravestones, there's mm -hmm. a little bit of light that you can see. Yeah, it's so good. It's you can uh, you can see Baymax in uh, Hero's Eyes, which I just caught for the first mm -hmm. time after seeing it multiple times. Yeah, the reflections in this movie yeah. are amazing. They're so good. Uh, that car chase is pretty dope. Still, oh, I love that car chase. Um, yeah, any time that they do a wide out, like mm -hmm. a, a zoom out of anything. Yeah. The city is, it's, oh, oh my god, breathtaking! It's it really so is so cool. There's that great tour of the city the first time uh, Hero gets on Baymax's back oh, and yeah, they fly for the thing. first yeah. time. Oh, 
when he goes up to the top of the Golden Gate Bridge, and then he flies back through the city. Like, well, he flies across the bay, and then up through the city, well, even, and then up through those, like, oriental well, kite-shaped windmill things. Even when we come in, windmill we, we things. come through the, like, kind of come through the sky there a little bit. And oh, yeah. We, and we see the cool, like, they look like, uh, like, Japanese little lantern, but they're shaped like koi. Yeah. They have, like, the well, they're, they're more like, they're them. either, like, uh, wind socks or, like, kites. Well, they, and they're they, have, like, they have, like, motors inside I know, of them, too. And I'm wondering, are do you think those are, like, windmills I for power generation? Because that's what they look like to me. Yeah. Uh, it's such a beautiful design. It, like, to me, that was almost a, a Miyazaki nod. It's like, very cool. to me, it looked very much like things we've seen in, like, Castle in the Sky and, you know, Nausicaa, you know, with kind of the almost steampunky pseudo sci fi kind of stuff that we see. I thought I love those, and the fact that they fly up one and they land on top of it and they just yeah. kind of chill for a minute. And it's, and it's so cool. Uh, it's very much like Zootopia too, because you yeah. see this world and you're like, I can see people living in this world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like whenever, like when they're on the street, when Hero's chasing Baymax to the street, it's like, wow, this looks like all these people look like they actually have a purpose and are right. going somewhere. It's not like just some random movie where they're just like. Do, 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 do. we're just walking or we're sitting <laughs> yeah or we're standing out a lot it looks like they're actually doing stuff and right like, uh heroes running through and he's like pushing people out of the way and they're reacting for him you know getting pushed yeah. out of the way yeah um that it's just little stuff like that and like the battle damage that they all receive yes it's so cool like i noticed on um, like again for the first time um mainly because i was paying more attention to it than i normally would Mm -hmm. um hero i i wasn't really paying attention but hero's got some battle damage too yeah i mean they've got like you know cut like scratches and stuff like that but he's also missing his little thing on his shoulder oh really he's got he's got a little red thing on one shoulder Mm -hmm. red thing on another shoulder and a red thing in the middle the one on his left shoulder's gone like popped out was that after they fought yokai for the first time okay yeah I, i caught it when they decide to go into which by the way Spoilers for the end of the movie. Don't really care about spoilers, but I'm yeah, no, we told them what we were watching. They knew ahead so, of time. All right, here's the thing: they don't do that really high fly up in the sky, loop de loop thing, and then go into the Stargate. That you know, at the very end of the movie, if they yeah. just go straight into the Stargate, they're not going to hit that piece of rubble. It's not going to be there. Baymax is going to make it up. Yep, but that's not as good of a story. No, but but. <laughs> Uh, on on that same note, though, if Yokai or Professor Callahan doesn't do all the things he do, does leading up to that, all his criminal activity, they never were, never would have reopened that portal, and they never would have found his daughter at all in the exactly. first place. Do we ever find out who like, what happens with the fire? Because I don't think it's explained that Ca- does Callahan actually start the fire? I that's Cause, what uh, cause, I assume because we know he steals the technology right. that's what i assume i think yeah, he like, saw it's, it's an and assumption. saw that as his ticket that's his ticket because one of the everything. things hero says in his presentation is he talks about the construction application mm-hmm. and he's like what it would take a crew a year to build one person can build in a fraction of the time and he builds that little stand that he ends up standing on yeah, and so i think paid. callahan sees that and he's like I can rebuild the portal with this technology because i'm on my own and nobody's then- going to help me they've shut down the project so I think he set the fire. And then he basically designated survivors the uh, the school, which is pretty cool. I'm throwing all these references in there. Yeah, I don't know that one. Yeah, uh, What's it's that, that one? It's that new one with uh, Kiefer Sutherland. He's the oh. president. Oh, that's that right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Designated survivor on ABC. <laughs> <laughs> nice plug. Yeah. <laughs> that's a Disney company. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's ABC. <laughs> Not that uh, we're exclusively Disney here, but that's a Disney company. Well, this episode is exclusively Disney. It kind of is. Um, yeah, it just all, all the little stuff in this movie is so the details is so perfect. They bring it with the details. I think it's it is. I even love their little house above their little bakery. Uh, it's so cool. It's so warm and cozy, and I I want to live there, man. It's they got three, that cool corner window with it's the three stories the too. Turret or whatever. Because you've got the you've got the diner in the bottom. Yeah. You've the got the kitchen main area. house. I kind of feel like that's probably like kitchen, living room, and the aunt's, and room, aunt's room bedroom. And then the, and then boys the, have the, the two upstairs. boys have the kind of attic or third floor level, which is cool in itself. 
and yeah it's just so so cool that's very san francisco the vertical house you know they have a Think lot of, of those how much that would cost though that oh, diner I'm must sure. be raking in tons oh, sure, must be yeah. packed out every day yeah they're probably selling vegan organic muffins for 15 dollars a piece they've got wings though Wait, no she just makes those yeah, upstairs the in the wings. kitchen yeah i think it's just a bakery i don't know she makes some ramen gives the in, kids some ramen in that little credit scene downstairs yeah they're in oh. the they're in the booth i didn't notice she that she gives them some ramen nice uh, so know, maybe they do lunch too i don't know i suppose hmm <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with the story whatsoever oh uh, but, but no. so, yeah i guess we can go into the story i mean this is another classic contemporary disney or pixar movie where they just decide they're going to rip your heart out for a minute and they get you all attached to these two brothers and this great relationship they have and things start looking up and oh guess what we're going to kill one well, of them well here's the thing it's like we've already killed the parents yeah they start we off, them off with, screen with two orphans so and, so and hero made my orphan list and disney like hmm the kid the parents have already died who do we have aunt brother mm. kill the brother. brother yes and then what can we do let's get them all emotionally attached to this other character this robot then we can destroy the robot but it's, it's okay we'll bring the man. robot back Oof. but you won't know the robots back for at least <laughs> three minutes yes exactly uh, but the way that they do that whole emotional roller coaster the way that they they play you like a puppet, mm -hmm. and they do it. It doesn't matter how many times I watch this movie. They play me like a puppet every time. I feel those feels, and I love the way that they can do that. It's it's pretty impressive, but I find this one to be a pretty unique story within the Disney canon. Yeah, I didn't cry this time. I don't think Disney... I think it's the only superhero movie Disney's done at all. I mean, there are other, I guess well, you could say, super power. No, that's Pixar, it's though. It's the same company. Mm, Is it? I mean, it's not the same studio. Ooh, it's the same are, are the parent same company? company. They're not the yeah. same animation studio, though. It's an animated cartoon that Disney owns the property for. Yes. <sighs> it's Disney. Josh it's Disney. You know what I'm saying. Is it better than Incredibles? Yeah. Um, I said it. You want to fight? The animation is, is fantastic. Yeah, leaps and three bounds times above. as good as The Incredibles, but I th still think the story of The Incredibles, in my opinion, is better. What's the story to The Incredibles like? It's well, his the family wife being he's incredible. having an affair the whole time, right? And he almost does. Not really. He, he gets, gets close. He gets seduced by the job and the chance to be super again. He doesn't really get – what's her name? I can't remember what her don't name be making, is. Don't be making – The skinny blonde girl. I don't – you're what's asking me. I don't. It's Pixar. I don't I'm care. asking myself, really. I'm looking at you, but I'm asking myself. You're trying to make excuses for but Craig no, T. Nelson. But it's, no, it's great because in that movie, you know, it's like they're superheroes and they're, they feel important. They have purpose. And then the world says, okay, there's actually too much risk and danger here. We're shutting you down. You can't be super anymore. You have to just assimilate into the regular society. So they do that. They try as hard as they can to just be regular people. And him and his buddy Frozone, they just, they just can't handle it. they got to have a taste of the action. So they start trying to do little side gigs on the job. He gets recruited. He starts doing these secret missions. She thinks he's no one cares. Maybe having an affair. We're not talking about Incredibles. It's Let's talk about the amazing. better. Let's talk about the better movie. Ah, oh, it's so good. So, whatever you think about the Incredibles, um, I guess you can compare this movie to it. It's from a similar era, superheroes. But it's this one's an origin story though, really, where the Incredibles isn't. It's kind of a comeback story. Anyway. Enough compare and contrast. I like the way that this story stands out in the Disney canon, the non-Pixar canon, because we don't have any sort of origin tale of anything like a superhero. This is very unique within the yeah. Disney canon. And the way that they do it by pulling together this whole team of people 
that's impressive because usually Disney really zeroes in and, and has tunnel vision on one hero, you know, or maybe a hero and a sidekick. But having a whole team like that, I think that's really cool. It's it's a unique situation for storytelling in Disney. All right. We agree on the story that it's really, really good. Indeed. Better than Frozen. Gonna jab uh, it in there. Agree. Just keep jabbing Frozen. Absolutely. Just kicking it while jab it's down. It. Jab it. There's a couple things uh, character-wise. There's one character that I don't get. Would you hmm. like to take a wild guess who it is? I'm going to guess. Let's see. I, Let's see I if have, we're on this wavelength. I, I'm thinking two characters. Okay. I'd like to hear them. My first, my gut instinct is it's Fred. What's am your I, second? Am I wrong? One? My second one is Honey Lemon. It's Honey okay, Lemon. Okay, I knew it was gonna be one I, of those two. Honey Lemon, just I don't get it. Yeah. She's like super skinny and tall, and she doesn't call Hero <laughs> by the correct name. What Everybody she... else calls him Hero, 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 and she's like oh. Hero, and you're like, no, 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 <laughs> Hero, like, Hero, no, 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 it's hero just go with it and she she has to put an inflection uh, on it well i, I like, think oh the gosh. directors would have corrected her if they didn't want her to say it that way yeah that's gonna be the one thing that maybe they'll so, learn, maybe she'll learn to say his name correctly in the show okay besides the way that she says his name and the fact that she's skinny what don't you like about her her voice her voice has been annoying oh okay. it's a bit like I can't. How do you feel about it her? Seems, it seems like there's an accent, but it's weird because half the time she doesn't. There's nothing, mm -hmm. and then like she'll say a couple words, and then accent will happen. Yeah. And it's like, what are you? I don't <laughs> even know. She's a nerd. They're at nerd school. I guess. Um, what do you think about her super purse? It's the stupidest thing in the mm -hmm. world. I mean, the all even Fred, <laughs> even Fred can jump really high and blow fire. I know. I what know. can she do? She's like, hold on, I've got my purse. Beep beep beep. I'm yeah. gonna throw some goo at you. Right. And she throws goo, and then she blows her goo purse up at the end. <laughs> I, I kind of agree. I think that. She could never have a solo movie because no. she'd get her butt kicked. But I think in a team, I think she can add a little element that can help the team out. But yeah, she's not a strong superhero by any means. I mean, really, the only thing that she does... here's the Here we go. The only <laughs> thing that she does, she makes smoke bombs mm -hmm. that Fred has to use to ignite. Yep. And then she self-destructs her purse. Which had, did some damage. But that's it. After yeah, those two no, I, classic moves, I agree. she's done. <laughs> Go Go still spins around, has Dude, cool, she's awesome. has like the coolest outfit. She's my favorite. Yeah, like she's got the blade thing. She can slice and dice. She can fast. I, mean, I think it's because I still she go can, to the. She can be in a roller derby movie. Yeah, absolutely. She, I can see you like bashing people she's, in the face. Yeah, That'd be she's dope. hardcore. I think I like her the best too because she I. She wears Daisy Dukes with her, uh, uh, like biker shorts. Leggings. Yeah. 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 I don't know what I had to do with anything. I don't know. She's got purple highlights. She's cool. She's the coolest. She pops bubbles with her bubble gum. Yeah. She I, puts bubble gum places. I, I, That's very Rocketeer. I dig go go. I think. Put it. Cool. Have you never seen the Rocketeer? Have you? Yeah, I saw it when I was a kid. When it yeah, came it's out in very theaters. Rocketeer. You know where he like takes the gum and like puts it on his helmet, puts it different places. It's very Rocketeer. Putting the gum on that. Okay. Anyway. Yep. Sorry. How I, many? How many movie and TV references can Josh fit into a single episode? I think the over under is somewhere around five hundred. I mean, you're getting that's close. All this episode, you're is, getting close. Just throwing different Pretty movies much. out. Pretty much. Like in John Carter. No. Oh my god. <laughs> Terrible movie. But no, I, I, th I thought Wasabi was cool. I liked his arm yeah. blades. I, Those are pretty cool. Yeah. I, his outfit kind of sucks. It is kind of cheesy. It's like, huh, what should we give him? Well, let's give him this cool visor thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. We can see his headband. That's pretty cool, too. He's got some upper body armor. Cool. Then what? Hammer pants? Sure, why not <laughs> hammer pants? See, I kind of get the impression that, first of all, because this is an origin story... I kind of feel like, okay, they're just still figuring out their costumes. You know, Hero's trying to design all this stuff. He's doing all the work here, by the way. 
He's designing everything for everybody. I hope. And you can tell he really focuses on him and, and Baymax, Baymax because their well, even like, Go-Go, battle cause, armor cause is Go-Go, amazing. Gogo looks like the like the three of them look like they could be yeah all together. Yeah, because and like I all think, of their armor is the same. And he and does kind of have he like liked a, her tech the best too. Yeah. when he first meets all of them, he's and most they are impressed. Re- they by are her really tech. chummy with each other too. Yeah, like she right. does hug him a couple times. Like when they're walking on that bridge going to school, right. she's like, you know, yeah. They're doing like the little pushy sibling thing, so right, exactly. I can see that there's like a mutual respect there. Mm-hmm. So plus, I mean, I would trip that before him and Honey Lemon. Well, I don't know that I would ship him with any of them because he's 13 years old. But he's 14 years old. Oh, 14. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, and the... well, and age is nothing but a number. <laughs> At a certain point that is true josh we also don't but know how old any of them are they could all be 16 for all we know let's not go there i think that but the I point i'm the trying comics, to make he does get with honey lemon the point i'm trying to make sorry is that i think they're still in development as a team and that goes for their costumes as well they're yeah. they're looking to kind of find their way still and i feel like maybe in the series but hopefully in Big Hero Six Two, if they ever give us that, I think, they ju- I think we're going to have series. extra souped up, super cool costumes. I hope, so it kind of worked for me. I is hope what I'm Hero saying. does something with his gloves. Yeah. They were okay. Here, big. here's the deal. So Honey Lemon with her super purse, kind of weak. Hero's got nothing. It's just Baymax. He just rides on Baymax, right? Yeah. He doesn't have anything. He's got a mind. Yeah, I mean, he genius. comes up with all the stuff. So, I mean, but that I found that interesting. He didn't give himself any sort of he doesn't weapons need it. or as long as he's attached to Baymax, he doesn't Baymax. need it. But if he well, falls Bay- off Baymax, well, Baymax is always going to come after They got him, separated, and all he's doing is hanging on that wire for five minutes. Yeah, and, five what, and minutes. what did he do whilst hanging on the wire? Figured he out figured how to out beat stuff. Him. No, yeah. you're right. It, his mind does. is his best weapon. I get it, but... I feel like in physical battles, though, sometimes you need a little weapon of your own to kind of defend yourself. If Baymax is distracted or he's, I'm you know, sure taken he'll, I'm sure he'll get else. something in the series. Yeah, probably some sort of like crawl type spinny blade thing. See, I did. I even used crawl. What's that see from? The movie? From the movie Crawl. No. That was, <laughs> the, it's, it's stupid. Never mind. We just wow. Crawl. It's like oh this gosh. spinny thing and he throws it. It's dumb. This has been another unknown reference by Josh Kane. People know Crawl. Do they? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. If so, you know Crawl, shout me out. That's, I feel like we we're... We talk. I feel like we're digging really, really deep yeah, just this, to find these, these tiny all, little cracks in this movie. Yeah. So, do you want to go ahead and rate it? We can. Okay. Out I of mean, Dipper Pines. I think it's it's pretty – it's five Dipper Pines. Okay. Can we do something that I don't think is a five? Everything's a five. Sure. The I last mean, 17 things have been a five. Well, that's because you love everything, Josh. <laughs> that's what's totally next? not true. <laughs> that's what's totally next? not true. Um, you know what's next. It's uh, Ruby, right? No, Ruby's not next. Oh, Josh, cut that um, out. What is next? I don't remember. Oh! I didn't bring my calendar. Oh, it's the thing that we moved. Because it Ooh. was going to be something else. Okay, I know it's next. With, you know, Doc! <laughs> 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 that, that, that was good! <laughs> that was so good. Man, a nice nice one. Thank you. Well, um, so I guess you're giving it five Dipper Pines? Yeah, it's five Dipper Pines. <laughs> okay. I am going to give this one four and a half. A four and a half. You are correct. Why was four it, and was a it, half? Was it Jiminy because Cricket. because uh, the We Can Be Immortal song was Fall Out Boy and not Imagine Dragon? Is that the no. reason that it's a Although I was, I was very convinced that that was Imagine Dragons. I was. Well, they have a song called like I think it's Immortal, <laughs> but I think it's just it different. sounds to me. It sounds like Imagine Dragons. Anyway, that might make me old. All these bands sound the same. Uh, but I well, we get to I see love what this is it, movie. Third Eye Blind? I love it, but it's not the very top tier for me. So it's real close, 4.5, but not quite what made, the top what, tier. What knocks off the, the 0.5? 
Only that there is a class of movies that I like even more than this. That's it. It's not that there's anything really detracting here. It's just that if I'm rating so everything... it's not Pinocchio, it's a 4.5. I, I guess in a way, I'm always ranking things in my mind as well as rating them. Okay. So maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I should just rate it yeah, just without the it. ranking in mind. I, I agree, Josh. You're right. Let's do this purely... This gets five too many crickets. Oh! <laughs> You're right. Yeah, we've been on a roll with double fives yeah, lately. Yeah, if I if I was to put this movie up against you know like some of like the anime and TV stuff I've watched, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a number. It wouldn't be up there. Right. But because I've seen so much stuff. That's but fair. That's just fair. Doing the movie as itself. Yep. No, you're right. You're right. I need to start thinking of it more that way. I agree. Okay. Well, you ready for? Well, we're doing something different, so I I can't really play the intro. You can. We'll just explain it. I'm not going to, Okay. because it's completely different. All right. So, Gavin, why don't you tell everybody what we're doing? In honor of the movie we watched today, Big Hero 6, we're going to rank our top heroes, and we're not going to rank five, we're going to rank six. So what would you call this special segment? And now, <laughs> another top six. Oh, no. You had a cool – when we when we discussed it Wednesday. What was it? I don't remember. It's our big top six heroes. <laughs> our big top six heroes. Yeah. I forgot. I totally forgot about that. Oh, man. I think I had it written down on my calendar, which, again, I did not bring with me. Yeah, me neither. Oh, well. All right. So – we have a special guest. I brought Barrington on. Barrington, say something. You can't talk. He's a stuffed bear. For those of you not in the room, which is all of you but me, Barrington is basically a stuffed teddy bear that is the size of me. Yeah, he I, I, is huge. I don't think I'm going to have him after tonight. Where did you get him? I got him at Target on Are Black Friday for $10. Dang. I should have bought three because now I'm going to miss him. Man, he yeah. is huge. He's going away. It's very sad. Aw. Bye, Barrington. He's been, yeah, he's been in our apartment since Black Friday. Wow, really? Yeah. I knew he'd been he's here just, a while. He's just been sitting in there. He's listen, He's watched a bunch of the animation stations <laughs> with us. He's watched Troll Hunters one and a half times. He ha- He's watched all of Troll Hunters at least. He's once, watched yeah. more Troll Hunters than me. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, enough about your plush toys. Ah, sit there, bro. He's got a nice sit. He just kind of sits up. He's Perfect. huge. He's I ridiculous. wish you people could see how huge this is. I'm gonna take a picture. Of you Barrington. should. You should post him because he's ginormous. All right, so. Top six heroes. Big top hero six. Take <laughs> big, six here. Whatever. Hero six top big. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Can I see your red pin, sir? You, yeah, sure. You're kicking it off, right? I get to start it this time. All right, dude. So for my number six, buckle up, guys. There's going to be a lot of anime in this. Um, so shocker. for my number six, I'm going to see if you like this one. Okay. This is going to be different. Okay. I'm going to go with Shinji Ikari. From Neon Genesis Evangelion. Again, this is going to be one of those deals where you know that I've watched that series. Yeah. But I watched it once and it was so long ago, I don't feel like I have a good grasp of who the characters were Uh, anymore. Shinji, he's the one that doesn't like... Okay, so here's the thing. People are probably... I know probably Josh Calhoun right now. I work with him. He's, mm-hmm. He listens. Is he he's, jumping through the speaker yeah, he's, to he's strangle me right now? Yeah, he's probably me right now saying, what the heck, <laughs> Shinji Ikari? Because that's how I know that he he, uh, he listens to it. Because I'll just be like, I'll be working. Mm-hmm. Or I'll be on the phone with somebody. <laughs> and it'll be like, beep, beep, beep. Why didn't you include this part? I'm like, oh, my, my bad. Sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I have a, a guy on my team who is a listener now. And, um, you know, randomly throughout the week... He'll just send me an email, which is like his top five of whatever we did. And he'll give like full paragraph reasons. And it's awesome. He'll just send me this huge long email. Here's my top five, whatever it was that we did. And it's awesome. So we like that. Okay. So with Shinji, here we go. So he's a hero in the fact that first off, he didn't want to pilot the Ava from the very beginning. Okay. 
So he doesn't want to do it at all. I know who we're talking so about. So he sees, but then he sees an injured Ray. Mm -hmm. Decides to pilot. Bunch of bad stuff happens. He gets the crap beat out of him a lot. Doesn't want to pilot. Always goes back to piloting. Mm -hmm. So even after everything gets him down, he sees one of his friends like almost get killed. Mm -hmm. He still is able to go in and do his job. Even though he doesn't want to. He hates it. Mm -hmm. He still, will still go in, get in that Ava, and do his Goram job. Right. Firefly reference. Because of reference. I said Goram. You did. I so did. what are we up to? 499? 499 Gorams. Nice. No. Oh, Re references? Movie and TV oh, references. Like 70,000. Who knows? Oh, yeah. So, cool. You could say it's 20,000. So those of you who bet the over just won. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So my number six. You're done with yours, right? I'm done with okay. my number six. Shinji my, Akari. My number six is from tonight's movie. I'm going with my favorite hero of the six, Gogo. And... <laughs> That's a dude. Okay, what? we should have talked about this before. Gogo's a heroine. Okay, so we have to go with males. I went with males just because maybe uh, down the road if we do top heroine. True. Good point. Good point. Well, I'm including her anyway. <laughs> you included all the Thundercats, so I'm I'm doing a rule because break on this one. Because those are all cats. Yeah, but you choose chose it as one pick. You know what? Liam still hasn't. Giving up his top five cats, just saying. I don't think he has top five cats. He doesn't like cats. Oh, yeah. Maybe he does. Maybe we either picked the wrong cats God, or feel, it's because yeah, we, we picked cats we, at all. We picked the wrong cats, I think it was. Is that what it is? I think so. I don't know. We don't know. We didn't pick Felix or <laughs> Garfield. I like Garfield. Sure. <laughs> Heathcliff. <laughs> Hey, go, just go. Uh, yeah, go. Go, go. Oh, go, go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I, she's my favorite one of, of these heroes. I like her probably because I'm the guy that still goes to the park and rollerblades. I just I, was the last I time find you went a, a kinship at the park? like a month ago really? when it was still warm. Yeah. Oh. That's what I do for thanks exercise. For, thanks for inviting me to go to the park. I didn't know you had rollerblades. I don't. I could totally buy rollerblades. Do it, man. Let's you know go blade, you know man. They, Let's you, shred some sidewalk. You know what they used to call me in high school? In um, junior high? And elementary? Rollerblade cane? I used to call me Josh because that was my name. Oh. Well, that's appropriate. So what's your uh, number five? <laughs> <laughs> um, my number five. Okay, get ready for this one. My number five is from this little anime called Ruoni Kenshin, and I went with Himura Kenshin. Title character? Yes. Nice. Or Patel Sai the Manslayer. is an anime series, right? Yes. I know some things. They made some live action movies. See that cool scar on his cheek? The little X. Yeah? He's pretty dope. How do you get an X scar? Somebody has to do that to Someone you, goes right? like, and then he has like one slash, and then somebody else goes over and goes, and like he gets the X. Man. And he has a cool sword, which instead of the blade being on, you know, like the curvy end, it's on the inside. So So it's more like a sickle. Yeah, pretty much. Huh. So like he'll fight people with the sword, but he won't because he's ba basically taking this vow not to kill. Oh. But he still has the head of a sword. So, so why so. is any edge sharp then? Well, because it still has to, in case you know, in case something needs to get done. Okay. Like, say he's out camping and he has to cut, like, a string. Or, like, he's... So that's when he whips out his Swiss Army knife. You don't need a sword for that. They don't have a Swiss Army knife. Okay. It's the Edo period, bro. Oh, I Swiss didn't Army know that. Knives. I had no yeah. idea. Oh, yeah, this is, like, the, like during the very beginning of, like, the Shogunate. Uh, ah. Yeah. So your sword is your only cutter. Pretty much, yeah. Got it. But right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sure, why not? Kenshin, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's amazing. You know none of these people, so it's uh, hard to explain. No, you're doing a great job. I just didn't know that the, you know he didn't have a Swiss Army knife. That's all I didn't know. Other than that, I was right with you, dude. What do you have here? Fine. Okay, number five. From a movie you have already disparaged on this very episode, The Incredibles. Oh. I'm going with Frozone. 
I love him, dude. Why are you picking on even the main character? Well, they're not always my favorite. I mean, I like the Incredibles. I think they're all great, and I like them as a family unit. I think I picked them on my favorite teams. But as far as the heroes go in that world, dude, I dig Frozone, man. He is so cool. I uh, I think he's awesome. I know what you mean, like, with your heroes. Yeah. Like, like you're you're not really liking them. I hate Harry Potter. Like for example, love Ron. Yeah, and it, Hermione. That, that's a great. Harry. That's a great example. Yeah, and like in the Avengers world, like I don't really care for Captain America or Iron Man. Like they're kind of like You're the big Thor two, boy. like leaders. But I, I'll, I mean, Ragnarok is the one I'm most excited for because my favorites are Thor and Hulk. They they, they get like no love in like those. That, like that chicken in those team up movies. Like what? The girl in the Avengers. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, so I I do kind of always not always, but I'll, oftentimes I like the side, characters the side characters because I feel like in, with the main characters, the leaders, they kind of have to go down the middle of the road. You know, they have to kind of be maybe not wholesome, but they kind of have to be um, what's the word I'm looking for? You kind of have to know what to expect with them. Yeah. Whereas other characters you know can be a little off the you wall. You know they're gonna struggle and blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. Whereas other characters, I feel like they can give them more character, really, and more, you know, off the beaten path, you know, elements to them. So I don't know. I, I like that a little bit better sometimes. And so in this case, I liked Go Go better in tonight's movie, and I like Frozone the best in The Incredibles. Nice. Yeah, it's like in Gundam Wing. I'm just trying to fit as many references sure, as dude. I possibly can. Sure, dude. Rocket. Uh, like in Gundam Wing, I mm-hmm. hate Hero Yui. He sucks. It's all about Duo Maxwell. Yeah, I'm with you, dude. He wears that little priest collar. It's I know, dude. The priest collar. Yeah. His hair. The hair. And his Gundam is the best. Uh, Death Sight. Oh god. Totes. <laughs> I hate you, man. No. I just hate you, I'm man. I'm trying to give you support. Uh, okay, so for my number four. I went a little bit different. Mm-hmm. I didn't do an anime. Really? I went with a Disney movie. Wow. I went with Simba from The Lion King. Interesting pick. I did not consider Simba. I mean, he That's saves, really good. He, he saves, is heroic. He comes back and Rock, saves yeah. his whole community. And gets to have kittens with Nala. Dang. That's a hero right there. Amen, brother. <laughs> did you see Nala? Her eyes? Yeah, I did. I did. She's real pretty eyes. That That's a good pick, man. I I did not consider that movie when I was thinking through all the heroes, but I probably should have. That was a good pick. I'm going to write Simba down on my honorable mentions right now. Nice. What are we on? Number four? Number four. All right, so I'm going with a movie that we watched recently that you introduced me to that blew my mind from the boy and the beast i'm going with cuda kumitetsu oh. no i'm going to cuda i like kumitetsu i think he was awesome but cuda for me just made that movie i love everything about that character and i find him so heroic in the last half of that movie even when he's helping his master or mentor or whatever he was you know, he's heroic in doing that. And then just when he's facing that nemesis at the end, I just, yes. It's so good. He's so amazing. I love him so much. Grab the sword. And so. It's in your soul. <laughs> the bang and a whoosh. That's so great. But, I mean, I've only known that movie for, what, three, four weeks now? Something like that, and, yeah. I mean, it's so good. It, you I, bought it yet? Not yet. I, I haven't been able to buy it yet. We just bought a treadmill, so that kind of ate up some of my In your super movie, small apartment. Movie I watching. you're going to do. Um, we're just, all we're going to be able to do is run on a treadmill. Apparently. That's it. So, oh, yep. Man. Cuda. That's uh, my number four. I like it. I like it. So, uh, my number two. Three. Three. My three. number three. I went back to anime. Of course. And I went with one of the first anime that i really got super duper into mm-hmm. i mean D- digimon i don't really count because i mean i know it's anime but it's also one of those like well it was on fox 25 right on saturday mornings so i don't really consider it i mean it's definitely an anime but i don't really consider it like an anime it's just like a childhood um okay so yeah i went with bleach 
And I went Bleach with is Ichigo. The... No, I went oh, with, oh, no, I'm oh, getting there. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and I went with Ichigo Kurosaki. <laughs> Now here's the yeah, I've, a, I've heard of Bleach, and I thought you were saying the main character was called Bleach. I was, I was like, what? Clorox. <laughs> uh, no, I went with uh, I went with Ichigo Borax. Kurosaki from Bleach. Okay. Now here's the thing. <laughs> Would you like to take a guess who the American voice actor for Ichigo Kurosaki is? Uh, is it the Bosch? It is Johnny Young Bosch. <laughs> yes. But I like no, it. yeah, like when I first... are you are you okay with me calling him the Bosch? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Might as well. All right. Um, but yeah, like uh, when I first uh, heard that this was getting a manga, I mean an anime adaption, mm-hmm. I started buying all the manga. And at the time, I think I was working at uh, Walden Books. Ooh. So I would go and I was getting that Walden Books discount. I was getting the discount and I was oh, just yeah. buying them all. Nice. And so I have, oh my gosh, they just, I have like, uh, remember those purple got tubs? So many of them. That yeah. were in. Yeah, Ooh. that's full of bleach manga. Wow. One of those is. So I have tons of them nice and the anime ended sadly but it a- ended on a sad note no, or it's it sad ended. that it, it ended it's sad that it ended got it but guess what they announced a new anime coming out for bleach is it uh, starting over no it's like a continuation really yeah i'm happy for you dude my only thing is like my ship didn't happen in that maybe it will in this nope no? It's, it's a continuation of. Um, yeah, he gets with Orihime. He totally should have been with Rukia. Well, time to start writing that fanfic. Make it happen yourself. <sighs> Dude, I fanfic him with Tatsuki. What? All right. Gavin, what do you got for <laughs> number three? <laughs> number three on my list is from a classic Disney film. Nokia. I'm going with the title character from the movie Robin Hood. He's easily one of my favorite heroes. Uh, I love the Robin Hood story in general. I think it's a fun folk tale of sorts from merry old England. And the Disney film. Did you know it's Robin actually Hood. a Danish story? Is it really? Story? Is, it, is that where it hails from originally? No, no, it's it's English. I mean, I don't know. You could have fooled me. Um, the Disney film Robin Hood is one of my favorite Disney movies, and I think it's still underrated to this day. I think it's amazing, and he is a great, great hero. You just root for him the whole and freaking time, And he gets made Orion at the end. You, yes, he does. Indeed. That's an Eddie Izzard joke. There's, when, uh, when there's was, reference 900,041. Well, it's an Eddie Izzard joke when he's talking about Kevin Costner and Prince of Thieves. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Although that that is and a and he does good movie. like where is the maid Marion? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So my number two. Yep. Bring my it. My number two. One with a little anime. No, it's hard to believe, but this is the last one. What? And dude, I went, if we have the same number one it's again, probably it probably is. Ah. <laughs> um, I went with. From Dragon Ball Z, I uh-huh. went with Goku himself. O M Z. See what I did there? I went with <laughs> Goku because he's he's like the uh, I was gonna say he's the prince of all Saiyans, but that's Vegeta. But yeah, he's the yeah, strongest. Of, he's the strongest of all the Saiyans. He saved Earth. I can't even count how many times he's died more did than he save Buffy Earth dies. More times than SG one did. Yes. Dang. And SG one saved Earth a lot. I know. We didn't really talk about Stargates in the Big Hero Six. I think I mentioned it once, but we didn't talk about how they, it is very how they totally ripped off Stargate. Yeah, even, I mean, even with it the wasn't, ramps, it wasn't though. And they're like, okay, so you go in this one wormhole yeah. and it comes out the other one. Yeah, they didn't explicitly say they were using wormhole technology though, it's or wormhole manipulation, teleportation. So, yeah, it's Stargate. It's totally Stargate, <laughs> which I'm fine with because I freaking love Stargate. Well, what, what, watching it in the theater, I was like, oh. They're ripping Stargate, yeah. and me being stupid, uh, when like the when the guy catches the hat and then he throws it back. Yeah. I'm like, no, technically Stargates don't work that way. You can all, matter can only go in one way through one Stargate. Right. If he was to throw the hat through, it would disintegrate. Yeah, he'd have to reestablish it from his end first. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we and learned that from TV. 
you have to have the correct, you know, a good DHD in order to do that. Right. And Samantha Carter working on it nonstop all the time. Yeah. Pretty and much. I don't know how they were able to like pop the thing open and like use the crystals. It's like that's just a crystal. And like and they're just like, huh, this red crystal, if I put it next to this yellow crystal, I'll be able to dial Earth, but we don't have the correct point of origin. Maybe if I look hard enough, because I'm Daniel Jackson, yep. I'll be able to figure it out. Yep. And then he died, and then Jonas Quinn came on, and then the show could have ended. <laughs> that was a dig just for Charlie, I yeah. think. <laughs> Amazing. She doesn't listen to the show. Uh, not often. But I I do find a lot of similarities with the Stargates. And I do want to talk about one more thing before we go on. What did you think about when they go through that portal at the end and they're in that oh. weird sort of made-up interstellar space? It's so trippy and cool. It's so awesome, isn't it's, it? Uh, it's, I felt like that scene there. was directed by Christopher Nolan. <laughs> like, yeah, I felt like we were in Interstellar or something. It, I thought it was really cool. You think it's when Snoop Dogg saw that movie, he was like, dang. <laughs> like, <laughs> it could be. I Kind of and doubt he's and, seen that movie And everybody for some around reason. him, too, because, you know, I mean, just standing right. next to Super sure. Dog, I think you get a sure. contact high. It's automatic. Sure. Gavin, you're number two. <laughs> Man, we have made references to so many weird things on this This episode. is the referential podcast. It is. My Go number on. two is from the world of television animation. I know you're excited for me to say those words. Yeah, I'm very trying to figure it out. And I'm going with samurai jack oh snap i forgot about samurai I jack i love that show oh. so much i love jack. everything about him he is one of the purest heroes ever and he has that great perfect unrelenting villain in front of him all the time and then every other obstacle along the way and he just stays so true to himself and his mission the whole time I just love it, and the art and style of that show is perfect, so he ranks number two for me on the list of heroes. Nice. Well, now that we've talked about it, I'm pretty sure we both have the same number one. So I say we just go ahead and do our honorable mentions okay. at the same time. Well, uh, as you know, I wrote down Simba, so he goes on mine. Yeah. I had a hard time coming up with heroes, which is, I guess, why I stuck a heroin on my list. <laughs> screwed everything up. So you put drugs on your list. <laughs> um, see, I, yeah, I went with uh, Batman from Batman, uh, Spike Spiegel from Cowboy Bebop. Mm, yeah, that's a good one. I went with Aladdin. Oh yeah, that's yeah. a good one. But I mean, I'm just kind of like, yeah, he he kind of screws up a lot, and yeah, he's the he's the reason that everything kind of goes to crap, and then gets fixed. Yeah. But he, so, yeah, but he goes toe to toe with the most powerful genie in the world, yeah. and that's pretty heroic. I also went with uh, Ashikata nice. from Princess Mononoke, nice because he's dope. Nice. Uh, Hero from Big Hero Six. Excellent. And Jim Lake Jr. from DreamWorks Troll Hunters. Oh yeah, I don't know their names yet. I was like, who is that? Oh yeah, it's uh. uh <laughs> I don't have a good Toby. grasp of their names yet. And Jim, mm -hmm. and Blinky, Blinky and R. Right. <laughs> I like him. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> What's the the villain's name? I can't remember his name either. It's more complicated. Yeah, I don't remember. It's like Gundahar or something like Gundar? that. Gundar? He's a gum gum. I know that. He's a gum gum, yeah. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Uh, and then I also did with with the original eight Digidestined from Digimon. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. But there are eight of them. Because they also save the world a lot. Oh, cool. Those are some good honorable course. mentions. Yeah. What about I don't, you? I don't have many. Like I said, I wrote down Simba. I would add Aladdin to my list. He's a good hero. And then, um, you know, this one goes out to Liam. I'm putting Dusty Crop Hopper from Planes, Fire, and Rescue on my heroes list. Because he's freaking heroic in that movie. It's awesome. You should watch it, dude. i surprised you didn't include uh, Basil. <laughs> Basil. Rock from... Bone. From um, Mouse Detective. Yeah, I guess I guess he's a. Or not, he's not good. Bianca. <laughs> Bernard. Bernard. <laughs> yeah, he's very. I mean, when we think about it, there's there's kind of a hero in most of these movies. Yeah. But you know, those those are the ones that stand out to me. You so. didn't put Nemo on the list. 
Nemo doesn't do anything he heroic. He teaches the fish to swim down. No. Oh, wait. Is that him, or is that... I don't know. Flounder. Dude. Norman? Norbert? <laughs> don't tell me. The incredible I Mr. I got Limpet? This. I got this. Merlin. No, Marlin. Is Marlin's Marlin? his dad. Yeah, it was yeah. Marlin. I knew he yeah. was going to get the dad. Nice. Well done, dude. I try. <laughs> so it's your number one. Well, you want to do it at the same time? Yeah, let's do it okay, and see so if we one, are. One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Hercules. Hercules. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because he went all the way from zero to hero. Dude, they should make a song about that. <laughs> I know. And it should be amazing. And yeah, so Hercules, Hercules, our favorite hero. Oh, Hercules. We both really like that movie, man. We still have not talked about Hercules. We'll get there. Is, he on, is it on our calendar no, yet? No, it's not. We've really? Gone, we've gone all the way out to May. Hercules is still open. No, yet. April's still open. Oh, April we skipped was still over open. April. But now we Maybe that'll be him. the month of mythology. But see, we, we've teased them already. So now I don't think we should. You want to keep everybody hanging? I want to keep them hanging. They're dying for us to talk about Hercules, man, even though we mention it on every freaking episode. Let's see. We've got February, which is February month. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't have any special significance. But then Our March. Our next theme is March. We've got Sci-Fi March. March to the Stars. That's right. We're I doing Sci-Fi Month. I forgot about the top six, but I did not forget about <laughs> the Sci-Fi Month. I'm excited um, about that one. I think we picked some real winners. April is rainy. I think um, we should do Mythology Month and wanna, bring it. Do you want to put it in April? Why not, man? Do you want to do it in July? Maybe. Mm. And then May is Annie May. And we've got mm, stuff lined that one's up gonna for be Annie May. Killer. Annie May is going to be awesome. I can't wait for that I'm one. for that. Yeah. I reached out to some more. You know, nice. Some we might have some I've guests been, in uh, May. I've been uh, reaching out. You know, Sweet. You know, I like uh, it. We're doing some stuff. I like it. So next episode, hopefully we don't have the exact same number one again. We have to figure out what a top five for next week. Yeah, and hopefully there's a little more discrepancy on our ratings. But it's not bad if we both we both like love something. what we watch. Yeah. So I, I I will say next week I saw it in theaters yeah. when I was a wee lad. And that's the last time you yeah, saw it? That's the only, that, oh. Honestly, that's the only time I've seen it. Wow. So it's like, hmm. So you'll be watching it again for the first time. Yep. I think I remember getting the toys at... McDonald's? Oh, is it McDonald's or Burger King? Yeah, those are the likely suspects. Yeah, I think it may have been McDonald's. Nice. Yeah. Cool, man. Hmm. Good old well, I'm excited stuff. about it. I'm excited about it. Okay. Well, so Gavin, mm -hmm. where can all the wonderful listeners find you? Well, they can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Gavin Audison Art. What about you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh L. Kane. You can find the podcast on Instagram at Animation Station Podcast. On Twitter at Animate Podcast. Or go to the website, animationstationpodcast.com where you can click on the podcast tab and listen to all of our episodes. You can also find our episodes on iTunes. And Stitcher. And somewhere else that you're pointing at me for. No, we have a Tumblr. I forgot. Oh, I was trying Tumblr. To like, Tumblr and Facebook page. <laughs> and Facebook page. Yep. Do we have Snapchat yet? I don't know how that works. I'm too old for Snapchat. I don't understand it. Okay, cool. Like, we'll you, we'll you skip. Take, we'll take skip a, Snapchat. You take a thing. And then it lasts for like thirty, like ten seconds after they look at it, and they go ha 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 ha, and it's gone. Yeah, that's pretty much like, it. Oh. Yeah. And then they snap something back. Mm -hmm. But if you take a screenshot, it lets you know I'm an old man. Well, you know we don't have to do the Snapchat thing. I also don't know how to do Tumblr. Speaking of Tumblr, <laughs> oh my gosh, Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Throwing another reference in there, yeah. people want Marco to die, and I'm like, no, what? I'll kill Marco. That's crazy. Because he got with Jackie Lynn Thomas and not Star Butterfly. Man, and I'm like, people need to no. build a bridge and get over that. Yeah, I mean, I can understand him, you know, maybe getting with Jana <laughs> and Star, Jana or Star. That would be oh, and? Jana wow. and Star. Well, that would be. 
man. A Marco's menagerie, a, yes. Marco's a player. Yeah. He's dang. Well, it's it's funny because there's three girls that you know totally like him, and then you know he's just like, hey, I'm Marco. It's very Kim possible. Yeah, there you go. With just, Ron, you want to just start naming season. shows and movies? No, because they have to flow. But yeah, it's, oh, okay. in, the, it's in the last little bits of uh, Kim Possible where Ron doesn't know that all these girls totally like him. And then, you know, he's like, oh, girls like me? What? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And he's like, nice. I'm going to get with Kim. Nice. Excellent. Well, I don't know most of what you just talked about. So it's all right. We should probably wrap it up. Uh, be sure and check out uh, Cloud City Cast, our good friends. Always. Liam and Brittany. Yep. Been popping on some really good podcasts lately. They've been killing it lately. We need to have they've them got on a again. good they got a good thing going. They've maybe, got a nice rhythm. Maybe in February we get them on. Because we haven't had them on. Yeah, man. Because we haven't really talked about a show with them, you know? We yeah. haven't done an episode. Right. We've done what garbage you two watched. And me and Brittany were pretty much, oh yeah, we know what we're talking about. And then mm, that's one take. you and Liam were like, I remember watching Rocks Across the Screen. That's what I used to watch back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I love Rocks Across the Screen. It was so good. It was my favorite. <laughs> wow, dude. Uh, sorry for bringing some history and some variety to your lives. <laughs> oh, wait. What was that one thing you did with the weird cowboy guy? The weird ca- oh uh brave star <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows brave star oh. nobody oh man brave star like, like me and like one of my friends growing up in utah no brave star oh god yeah well, good stuff so for the animation station podcast i'm brave star <laughs> i'm trying to think of his trusty oh. sidekick i can't think of his name okay so for uh, i'm his horse the, sidekick <laughs> his horse no for the Animation Station Podcast, I'm Josh. I'm Gavin. Sign off? Made you look.